Okay, gang, good morning. Well, it's morning here right now. We're going to be talking about zeros and multiplicities. It's a very simple topic, and you're even going to ask, well, why are we spending so much time on it? Well, it's important, but at least it's one of those easier topics in college algebra. So there I am, writing this at the top, zeros and multiplicities. Let's look at a function. Let's look at one that's already factored. Those are nice. All right, we've got x to the fourth times quantity x to minus nine squared. And so this is already in factored form, as you can see. We're going to have x minus zero to the fourth power and x minus nine to the second power. Whoa, my voice is weird today. I think I haven't had enough coffee. All right. What does all this mean? Well, it means that x minus 0 is going to be written four times because it's multiplied by itself four times. And x minus 9 <clears throat> is multiplied by itself twice. Now you know how to solve a, a, an equation, a higher order equation. Actually, you know how to solve a quadratic equation. Well, you solve higher order equations the same way. You set each factor zero, equal to zero and solve. So four times you're going to have x equals zero. And two times you're going to have x equals nine. So you have two zeros. Um, you actually have zero as a zero, and you have nine as a zero. I wish writing didn't take so long. Okay, zero occurs four times. There it is. One, two, three, four. There are four of them. Zero occurs four times. And nine occurs two times. The fact that zero occurs four times means that zero, this is what we say, zero has multiplicity four. That's all multiplicity is, is how, do, how often does the same number occur? It's nothing more complicated than that. Zero has multiplicity four and nine has multiplicity two because it occurs two times in the function above. If only, if only everything in college algebra was this easy. Of course it does necessitate being able to factor, doesn't it? Well, we're going to be working on that.
Okay, now, let's look at f of x equals x to the fourth minus 12x squared plus 2, 27 I mean. We have to factor this, but it's a good opportunity to, to review u substitution. If I let u equal x squared, then u squared is going to equal u squared times u squared, which is x to the fourth. So I can rewrite f of x. I really should have said f of u. f of u equals u squared minus 12u plus 27, which I can now factor. Or you could use the quadratic formula with u. But the thing is that when something is factorable, factoring is so much easier and quicker. It's not easier. It's quicker. All right, as you can see, u is going to equal 9, and u is going to equal 3. But of course, the original function did not use u. It used x squared, or x. And u equals x squared, so I'm going to Substitute again and solve these two little quadratic equations. Okay, so x equals plus or minus 3, and x equals plus or minus the square root of 3. Therefore, the zeros are negative 3, negative the square root of 3, positive the square root of 3, and positive 3. You don't have to list them like this. You could list them in any order. Each one occurs one time. Therefore, we would say each of these four zeros has multiplicity one. kind of running off, off the edge here. All right, let's look at another function. By the way, these are your homework problems. 6x cubed minus x squared minus 216x plus 36. We're going to factor this by grouping. Remember grouping? Notice I've already made a space for grouping. There always has to be a plus sign between the two sets of parentheses. If you have a minus sign, you have to do this. And then factor each group of two by a GCF.
negative 36 is the GCF in the second pair of parentheses. Okay, so now 6x minus 1 becomes our greatest common factor, and we write what's left over as x squared minus 36. Now, set each factor equal to 0. Well, no, actually, what we're going to do is take this second set of parentheses and factor it, because notice it's the difference of two squares. And I forgot to write my zeros. Bad me. There you go. Now you put lines down between each factor, and you set each factor equal to zero, and you solve. So 6x minus 1 equals 0, x plus 6 equals 0, and x minus 6 equals 0. Add 1 to both sides, so 6x equals 1. Divide both sides by 6, so one of your zeros is x equals 1 sixth. The other two factors are fairly easy to solve. Well, maybe more than fairly equal. You have three zeros here. One sixth, negative six, and six. And they each have multiplicity one. This is supposed to be the word all. All occur once and therefore have multiplicity what? Multiplicity one. Okay, now here's a little note about even and odd multiplicities. Remember, all of this was discovered before there were graphing calculators. People had to have an idea, well, mathematicians had to have an idea of what graphs looked like <clears throat> before, um, uh, before there were graphing calculators, before they graphed them. So they would know about the behavior of the graph and not actually have to graph it because people used to have to make giant tables of points just to be able to graph. We couldn't just throw a graph, we couldn't just throw a function in a graphing calculator and poof, have the graph appear. Okay, when a zero has odd multiplicity, in other words, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, any odd number. The graph actually, now this is, this is only when a multiplicity is odd. The zero that has the odd multiplicity, okay, the graph will actually cross the x-axis at that point.
you'll see what I mean in a minute. We're going to actually do a problem. However, now we're going to look at, well, what if a zero has even multiplicity, like they did in the first problem we worked on, where zero had multiplicity four and nine had multiplicity two. Well, you're going to like this. When a zero has an even multiplicity, are you ready? Get ready. The graph kisses the x-axis at that point. Kisses, okay, I kind of like the word kiss. That's what I was taught. The graph kisses the x-axis at that point, but the official mathematical word for kisses is tangent 2. And you're going to see this in just a minute. So, here's what I'm talking about. Suppose we have this function and it's already factored for you. The zeros The zeros are going to be 3 and negative 2. 3 has multiplicity 5, which is odd, and negative 2 has multiplicity 4, which is even. Because 3 has an odd multiplicity, the graph will actually cross the x-axis at the point 3, 0. But it will kiss the x-axis. That is, it will be tangent to the x-axis at x equals negative 2. Or at the point negative 2 comma 0. I had to do that with my finger. A little messy, but you get the idea. Now notice that if you were to multiply these factors together, and I would never be that mean, you would get x to the 9. Alright, so p of x, this polynomial function, 
is of degree 9, so its end behavior is going to look like that. So we know it goes down on the left and up on the right. It's going to have x-intercepts at negative 2 and positive 3. Oops. Yeah, I had to make it neat. Couldn't stand it. This is tangent to, this is kisses. See the graph kiss the x-axis at negative 2? Then it goes ahead and crosses the x-axis at positive 3. Meanwhile, because we know all about end behavior, we know that this graph will go down on the left and up on the right. So it could only look like that. Okay.